Hey everyone, it's Tracking Pat, and in today's how-to video, we're going to be using the Prototrack SMX. I'm going to show you in here how to do center drilling and drilling sequences using subroutines and subrotates, as well as throw in a little bit of math help to figure out some of the dimensions that aren't on the print. As you can see from the print up here, there are quite a few things that are missing. There's also some milling involved in this part, but that's going to be in the second part of this. So for the first part, we're just going to cover the holes. So what do you say we get started? So here we are. We're using the demo box for this, and you'll notice here that I'm at the main screen. And so the first thing I'm going to do is select program, and then it's going to ask me for a program name, which normally I would put all that in here, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to skip that part and just press go to begin. So what I want to do first is I'm going to drill the hole that's the farthest to the right. So I'm going to select drill and in here it's asking me whether I'm drilling or boring the hole. I'm going to be center drilling so that's just one for drill. It's asking me my Y dimension and I did a little math from the last hole um, to see where I'm at, right? It tells me on the print that it's at 4.680. So I'm going to put that in there, 4.68 absolute. And the Y is on zero absolute. My Z rapid, I'm just going to use 100 thousandths above, and because I'm center drilling, I'm going to go negative 150. Okay, I don't need more than one peck for this, and I'm just going to set my RPM at 1800, my feed rate at 5 inches per minute, and use tool number one. So you'll notice when I push the look button, here's my zero reference, and there's my farthest hole. Now I've also got a hole up here and a hole down there. I could just use another two drilling events to do this, but an easier way would be to go to the more button and use the subroutines and say that I want to repeat something. So when I select repeat, it's going to ask me what the first and last event is that I want to repeat. And in this case, the only thing I have to repeat is event number one. So I'm going to put one in both of those first two questions. Now I did the math to find out the difference between where that hole is and the other hole is, okay? And that difference is 770 thousandths. So my X offset is negative 0.77, and keep in mind that offsets are always incremental. On the print, it shows me the difference from the first hole to the second is 2.5 incrementally, and I'm not changing my rapid or my Z offset. I need to do this repeat only one time, with the same RPM, feed rate, and tool number. So you'll notice here, there's the second hole. I'm going to do the same sequence to get the lower hole by saying, again, I'm going to repeat event one, only event one. This time my offset is the same, minus 0.77, but it's going to be negative 2.5, and the rest is going to stay the same. Okay, so when you look, you see all three of those holes. Now I've got these holes that are in somewhat of a bolt circle, although I don't need all the holes, so I can't use bolt hole. What I need to do is drill the first hole, so I'm going to drill the first one that's up at the top right of that sequence. So I'm going to go to drill again, tell it I'm drilling, and I need to know the X and Y answer. Now it's not on the print, but there's an easy way to find out where it is, and that's by using the mouth help function. So I'm going to go to help. And in here, it asks me what I'm looking for. Now, if you haven't used MathHelp a lot, you might have to search around to find these things. I actually know that it's MathHelp Type 25. I'm going to show you how I found it. So if I go to F, you'll see right here under the description, it says calculate the X and Y location if you know the radius and the angle. So when I select 25, it draws me an illustration that says, tell me what you got. So the radius is 1.95. And from zero to that first hole, it's 60 degrees. So you'll see there that it's figured out my answer. And down at the bottom, it says load this as your center. So when I do that and push the back key, you'll see that it's already filled in the part I didn't know. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Z rapid and my Z end again. I'm going to use the same numbers I did before. OK. This is going to stay the same. All of this stuff is going to stay the same. So I don't have to punch those numbers in every time. And when I push look, you'll see there's my first hole. Now what I'm going to do is to get the other four holes, because they're equally spaced apart, I'm going to go to the more key, again go to subroutine, but this time I'm going to use the rotate function. And in here it's saying, what do you want to rotate? Well, this time the event I want to rotate is event four and only event four. I'm going to rotate around zero, 00, and I'm going to move 60 degrees each time 
with four more repeats. So once again, when I push look, you're gonna see that there's my hole pattern all complete. Now what I need to do is I need to go back and I need to drill all those holes through because even though there's not a dimension on this actual print drawing, let's just say it's a half an inch thick, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take all those holes and do them again. The easiest way to do that is to go to the more button and this time I'm gonna use copy because copy is gonna allow me to edit what it is I'm about to repeat. So I'm gonna to go to copy and say repeat, and then I'm gonna say I wanna repeat everything from event one, which is the very first hole, to event five, which is the uh, last four holes, right? I'm not going to move where they're at, so X and Y and Z rapid are gonna stay the same, but now I need to get all the way through the part. My original holes were drilled at 150 deep. I probably need to go another half inch just to get the full tool through the hole. So I'm gonna say add an additional half inch to the Z dimension. I'm gonna do all of this one time, and I prefer not to change my feeds and speeds by using percentage. So I'm gonna come down here and say I wanna do all of this with tool number two, and you'll see now that I have 10 events. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up to the first new event, which is gonna be event number six. I'm gonna use the data forward button You'll see that my 650 thousandths is already in there. I'm gonna change this to use five pecs. I'm gonna slow this down to 1200 RPM. I'm gonna slow that down to four inches per minute. Leave that at tool number two. So when I page forward, the subroutine here for the other holes have already changed to what that says. So I can page forward again and get to the other drilled hole. In here, I've got the same changes to make, right? So I'm gonna come down here, five pecs, 1200 RPM, four inches per minute, and now I'm completed. So when you look here, you're not gonna see anything different. However, down on the screen here, I can look at the different views. And if I look at the 3D view, you'll see that there's two different depths on the page for everything I've done so far. Last thing I'm going to do is I gotta tell it about these tools, right? So I'm gonna hit the mode key. I'm gonna to go to setup mode. In order to show you this, I'm gonna to have to put in a reference point even though I'm not really setting up my tools. So I'm just gonna hit set there, go to my tool table, and I'm gonna pretend that I'm touching these tools off, right? So I've got a 0.4375 diameter drill bit, right, one for drill. And then let's say that I'm gonna use a 3 8 end mill. I'm sorry, uh, I did that wrong, actually, let me. Let me fix that again. This is my center drill, three, one, two, five. Sorry about that. It's a center drill. Got a little ahead of myself. And then my point four, three, seven, five drill bit. Okay, now that that's done, I can look at my tool path and you're gonna see how it rapids from each hole and all my peck drilling and everything else so it's complete. Now I can also look at verify part the verify part is probably not gonna really show me a whole heck of a lot here, just because it's just gonna show a square block and it doesn't know exactly what size the material is yet. So you'll notice it kind of cuts the corners off. If I was to go in and actually define the part, it would look more so like it. But I think you're gonna see in the second half of this that when you see the completed part, it will all look great together, okay? So I'm just gonna exit from here and then the last thing I would do is probably either save this program if I was gonna drill this part of it, or I would move into the next part of what I'm trying to teach you. So notice that I use subroutines for my repeats and my rotates in order to get the holes of where I wanted. And then I used copy in order to give me new pieces that I could change. So that's the difference. In a sub, it always keeps everything inside of one event that you're trying to repeat or mirror or rotate. When I use copy, I get all new pieces so that I can manipulate them any way I want to without changing the original piece parts. So as you can see, knowing how to use the proper subroutines and copies and things like that in the right places are gonna shorten the amount of programming that you have to use. In part two of this, you're gonna see how to actually do the irregular pockets and profiles. And also I'm gonna throw in how to use mirror image. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, don't forget to keep on tracking.